And I am really charged up about today's discussion. We've titled it The Dangers of Kitchen Fire for Fires for Older Adults. And uh, our panel member today, who we're going to meet in a moment, is an entrepreneur that has solved a problem uh, to deal with kitchen fires. And uh, we're going to learn about that, but we're going to have an overall discussion on you know, the challenges that we we face, um, especially if somebody is, uh, uh, you know, has early or late stages Alzheimer's, and there is a, uh, a working kitchen in the household, what are some solutions that we can, we can do? So with that, let's uh, welcome Mark Baldino to the stage. And um, uh, and if Mark, ha if you live in the DC metro area and you are, have heard the Baldino name or seen it driving by on, um, some trucks, uh, we're talking to the same Baldino family here. So, uh, Mark, uh, we're going to dive into kitchen fires for older adults and this unique product that you've uh invented and are producing and it looks like you got your little uh workshop right there yeah. um the uh but uh but before we do let's get to know you a little bit better and uh i i number one i want to give a shout out to mark mcclatchy with dwell assured and if mark's in the audience drop your contact info in there uh mark introduced us and uh when i when i heard you know uh Oh, Mark Baldino, uh, like the Baldino Lock Company, and he's sort of like, yeah, that's him. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and how you came about creating a product to deal with kitchen fires. Well, thanks for having me today, Steve, and I'll be glad to. I mean, it it all started in the fifth grade uh, <laughs> when my dad started the locksmith company. So I worked there, you know, after we got out of school, and of course, every summer. And one summer I worked after college and I just stayed there for the next 60 years. So that's, <laughs> that's how we developed Baldino's Lock and Key. And we have an alarm division, which I started, where we do access control alarm system CCTV. Okay. And from that, I was looking at a smoke sensor one day and going, wonderful device. They're everywhere in every home, mandatory by code to have it in every home, even businesses. And then I thought, well, well, wonder if they actually did something like extinguish the fire. So this was five years ago and I started just conceptualizing, well, what will work? What, what can you do? And so I came up with a device that I concentrated on stovetops because half of all fires start on your stovetop in your kitchen. It's an absolute fact from the National Fire Prevention Association, where they go to every fire department and say, okay, what were your responses? What started the fire? And half of them are stovetop fires. So it's an absolute focus point for our device. And, and it's a simple device where it mounts on the back wall above the stovetop, right below your microwave or range hood. And when the temperature hits, say, you know, 250 or so, uh, it activates a pump. We have a suppressant bag and we have two nozzles that spray out a cone of suppressant, not water, because if you put water on a cooking oil fire, you'll actually have a major explosion. It's very frightening. And uh, we can put out uh, any kind of stovetop fire, not only cooking oil fires, but just material fires. So if you have a pizza box on your stovetop and that starts on fire, we can put that out. Uh, paper towels, a dish rag, and of course, any kind of cooking fire you may have. And the beauty of our device too, is we cover not only all four burners, but a little bit on the edges, as far out as we can reach. So if you have a paper towel, roll of paper towels that catches fire, we can, we can stop that too. Uh, I love it. And uh, we're going to dive into the product. Um, and, and folks, just so you know, especially if this is your first, um, discussion that you've been to and Mark's talking about his product and we're going to demo it. And it's going to seem like 
this is a commercial for a product, but really there's nothing else out there. Like if there's nothing, nobody else is addressing this. I don't mind, you know, spotlighting a product, but, uh, but what I'm really excited about is us, you know, an overall discussion about the concerns of kitchen fires, especially for the older adults um, in our lives. And, you know, Mark, one of the things, the first generation of assisted living buildings um, had full kitchens with ranges and cooktops. And I believe in most states, they have basically said to developers, you need to remove those, detach them, replace them with something else. You can have a microwave, but there's no cooktop, okay? Because of exactly what you're you're bringing up. And, and here, let me share your website because there's two things on your website that I want to, to share with people in, in, for our discussion. And first off, I'm going to drop the, um, I'm going to drop the, the address into chat for everybody here. But if you, we're going to, we're going to learn more about this, but, but here's some stats that I wanted to make sure that we share with everybody in the audience here is, is that, um, uh, 356,000 home fires, 2,500 deaths a year, 11,000 injuries, and um, that's over 8 billion in property damage. And this is, uh, this is from this September report from the um, uh, fire loss in the United States. Uh, who's, who's this? Uh, National Fire Prevention Association, and they, it's a national group, and they take in all the responses that every fire department's gone on for any type, type of fire or emergency, and they pull in, they ask them, well, where did you go, residential, commercial, and what caused the fire? So they all report, you know, over just over 50% of all home fires start on the cooktop, and it Makes sense. You have a live fire there, a heat source, and uh, a lot of people don't even intend to start a fire there, but they turn away for a second. You know, they let the dog out or they answer a cell phone or are in the bathroom, and all of a sudden they have a major fire on their stovetop. And, and I can tell you in the conversations that I have with our community members, especially the adult children, a lot of times when a loved one is aging in place, this is sort of the conversation that they're having with me is, is that, well, I'm concerned about mom, you know, she's, she's fallen. And there was this one day I was over there and she was cooking for us and she left the stove on. What happens if I'm not around? And um, so the, and, and there's a lot of, there, there are other products out there, folks, you know, there's way, and there's ways to, you can unplug the stove and you can do things like that. But as uh, Mark had said, he's done the research. There's nothing that actually puts out the fire that is affordable and doesn't require, you know, a sprinkler system being installed in, in your home. Um, so, uh, you know, the other thing I, I was chatting with you about this uh, before we, we got on the call, Mark, is um, I recently had a conversation with somebody that lives in an affordable uh, senior living apartment building. And this is for people on fixed incomes. So they can't afford extra care for Alzheimer's and dementia. And she was talking about the residents roaming the halls at night that have dementia but they can't afford to leave and they can't afford caregivers, you know? And so when you think about this in an in a apartment building, if you've got a handful of people with dementia and you have working cooktops there, for the safety of all the residents, there needs to be an appropriate solution. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, like right now, your main customers are not not senior living buildings, but 
just regular multifamily apartment buildings. Yeah, we're we're having good luck right now going to multifamily housing where, uh, you know, there's many occupants in one building because if somebody forgets and they have a stovetop fire, not only impacts their residents, but could could affect 50 other people in the same building. So it's very serious with multifamily housing. Uh, and along with residential, when when we developed the product, it had to have several features in order to be successful. You know, of course, number one, it has to work. And not only works, it, it works to UL 300 standards. And those are the same standards as commercial uh, uh, restaurants, where, where we're 300A, UL 300A, and the A stands for four burners. We said, well, we don't need to do a whole row of cookware, but just concentrate on the stovetop. We did uh, testing three times. If you have 13 tests, you need to pass or you're not gonna get the rating. And we were successful in all of them. Every, everything from uh, uh, four inches of cooking oil in a crock pot to a 13 inch pan with one inch in. They even made you create your own 30 inch by 24 inch pan to emulate the whole stovetop on fire, fill it with cooking oil, and we had to put that out too. Wow. And that was really scary, but it worked perfect. And <laughs> it's it's sort of like the uh equivalent to Elon Musk taking a sledgehammer to his uh the windshield and it broke. Yeah. Uh you're sort of like, are we gonna pass the test? Well, okay. I so think we've the, uh, the, the, Third party testing, so we passed and and actually three times we, we did it once where we went up there just to see if we could do it without paying the UL certifiers, right? And then we did it once with just uh plug-in power DC only. And then we found out, well, if you want battery, and that was the next important thing, that requires you to do the test all over again. So mm -hmm. we in effect did the test three times, passed all three times. And then the next big feature is well how are you going to get power so we went with a 10-year battery we have a 10-year battery pack that we can install it in every unit and it's you know uh you can get a low battery beep if it does go low so if it's nine years you know eight months you can get a low battery warning so you know you need to replace the battery uh it had to be affordable and and we are affordable i mean we retail at 300 dollars per unit and 10 year life, pretty good deal as far as consumer products go. And then it had to be easy to install. And you can install one in less than two minutes. So there's a back plate you put on the back wall, three drywall screws, two way sticky tape. You even have brackets you could put on your microwave and then it suspends from your microwave and you clip it onto the brackets. So you can literally install one in two minutes. So between. Wow. All those features, we think we have a, a okay. good product for everybody. Well, no. I forgive the pun, but I think we've given the audience a warm up now uh, to yeah. to 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 sort of experience this. And you can see some of the products on the back behind Mark there. But um, you shared with me two videos, uh, Mark. Um, which one should I play first, the commercial or the demo? The commercial first. That, okay. That's fun. And we have two versions of it. We have uh, one, they're both firefighters, but they're uh, really to go out first to everybody, but really the firefighter community who are, who are becoming a big ally for us because- uh, Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, they would, if everybody had one in their uh, kitchen, they would, res they would stay there. They're, their response would be in cut in half for residential fire. So it's huge. Okay. So let's uh let's let's watch the the first one that I'll 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 share is one of the commercials, and then we'll take a break and and then I'll I'll play the other one, which I think is a demo of this product putting out a fire. And then I think folks, if you've got questions on this or if you're concerned about your mom and dad on on anything related to, you know, caregiving, fires, things of that nature, you know, just chime in with your questions. So here we go. Let's um, share screen. 
fires are a big deal but you don't need a big budget or a massive sprinkler system to protect your home you just need a tiny and compact firefighter <laughs> not me firebox for a fraction of the cost of a sprinkler system firebox can effectively and affordably protect your family from deadly stovetop flames for the biggest thing in fire safety or this little guy at firebotsuppression.com Home fires? Whoops. All right. Uh, well, uh, that's a very effective commercial. Uh, hats off to your marketing team for coming up with something that creative. Yeah, uh, and a little background on that. That's a real fire in the producer's uh, kitchen. So <laughs> we, we, I was glad it worked, and we, we actually had to do about you know four or five takes to get it you know on a good shot on film, but it. I'm going every time it worked. Uh, so thank goodness we didn't burn down his kitchen nor, nor the row of townhomes. So there you go. So okay. Real so now th this next one that I'm going to play here looks to me like it's an actual demo of how the product works. Correct. Correct. I think okay. that's uh, yeah. It's an it's a one of the UL test reenacted. I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at this. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you'll notice too, you see on the surface of the pan, there's a little yellowish hue. Yeah. Surfactant. So we not only cool the cooking oil down below the flash point, but we put a surfactant on it so it doesn't get oxygen. So one of the requirements of UL it can't reignite for five minutes. So you can't have reflash with a cooking oil fire. In that particular test, they had one inch of cooking oil to auto flash. And then of course you have to put it out, keep it out for five minutes. So, uh, and then if, if you heard in the background, we have a piezo much like a smoke alarm. So you would be alerted that it was activated and you may have a condition in your kitchen that needs attended to. Wow. Um... Let's see. Um, that that was a great demo. Now, it, and on there, what I saw is it's you know you still have the flame going. Yeah. You, you obviously can't put out the flame. Well, well, you you don't want to because you know then you'd have a, a gas leak. But let's say if you did, you know, we have a we have a wireless transmitter costs extra we can do a shunt valve to your gas to cut the gas off if it is activated just in hmm. case uh, you know and let's hope that you do respond you're not passed out on the couch and in, in the other room where you know to turn off the burner or the gas burner but then then you have to decide well okay we're going to have a fire that you're going to burn down the place and again you'll have a gas explosion anyway so yeah can you you know, what What can you do? I say, get the automatic shunt valve, then we can do that, but. Well, yeah, first, and if yeah. this is in a parent's house, I mean, this t could, uh, yeah. it's about, it, it's better than what you've currently yeah. got, which is fire alarms going off that might not go off. Yeah. Um, a, um, what do you call it? Fire extinguisher, which, uh, a parent may or may not even know where one of those is or how to use this or even try. They just need to get out of the house. But the beauty is this sort of takes care of all that. Mom gets out of the house. The house is saved, um, you know, it, which would be is a very important thing. So um, let's see. Margie is asking, what is the suppressant? Oh, the, the suppressant we use is not water. It's uh, Novacool. 
and it's specially formulated for us. And basically it does several things and it, it's non-toxic, biodegradable, so you don't have to worry. Uh, it feels a little sticky if you get it on your hands. Here, come on, here. So, you know, one of the suppressant bags and it's a little yellowish because it has chemicals in there that react with the fire that actually will, will cool the liquid or whatever's on the flash point is, and of course the surfactant. So it's a chemical combination. Um, I haven't been told what it is because it's proprietary and patented, but it works. We know it works. So. And then that that bag is in the product there. Yes. Where, yeah. where does that go in the product? I have one here. Just so happens I have one open. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see there's a suppressant bag, we have a pump, and then we have a circuit board over here, and then a battery pack. And then we have the, the misters. I don't know if your audience can see the little blue tip there. Okay. Okay. That's when, that reads the temperature no matter what it is. And then when the circuit board detects the activation trip point, It'll activate the pump and we have about a, we actually double up the suppressant. We also did tests where, okay, what is the minimal amount of suppressant that will put out the worst kind of fire? And we said, okay, that's it. Let's double it, put it in the unit. So we have, uh, you know, more, more than enough to put out any kind of fire. Okay, great. Um, let's see, several questions coming through on asking, your demos showed gas burners. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah gas is, uh, we'll say, um, you know, the, the quickest fire. Electric works the same way. In fact, technically, there's more fires from electric stovetops than gas stovetops, because I don't think people are as careful but those electric burners can heat up to, you know, 600 degrees very easily. Well, yeah, yeah no. And and the other thing is uh, my, my parents just got a stove. It's like electromagnetic. Um, I, I think oh, yeah, induction, 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 that's it. Um, but in theory, even though you can touch the cooktop, if something burned through on that pan, it's gonna it's gonna metal, flame up too. Metal will keep it on. So yeah. you have the same problem, you know. Of course, it's nice if you take the the pan off, but if you take the pan off anyway, you don't have a fire. So it's um, it's a partial solution. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let's see. Margie had a second question. Can you restate again? The, oh, the cost of this and and. Uh, who like if you're handy i imagine you could install it but you know the cost of the product and roughly like if you hired a handyman and and i guess do, do you all do installations here in the dc metro area where you're based on and in the dc area i mean for a single family home to go out you know we'll figure it out figure 75 dollars you know drive there install it and, and you're ready to go uh, we've done apartment complexes where we'll charge, you know, say $15 and install a unit when we go in. Okay. And then um, the, the cost of the unit again? Cost of the unit, we're $300, $299.95 for single family homes. If you're buying in a bulk or if you're buying five or more, we can give you a wholesale price. And uh, based on volume, uh, we we want to see people have it installed. We we, yeah. we want to sell it. We don't don't want. So you can get it as low as uh, two hundred dollars for volume pricing. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons why you know I wanted to have you on is that I see the the value in this product, especially in the large senior communities. As I had mentioned before, the low income ones that might have um, units in there or anybody that's got a cooktop range, uh, that this could really help save some lives and, and save the personal property as well. Of the yeah, there's two, two problems that go on. You know, first, you have fire damage. And then if you're in a building or apartment building that has a sprinkler system, 
Well, the sprinklers will eventually go on and put out the fire, but now you probably got more damage when the sprinkler is going off than the actual fire. Uh, but in a, in a home, a lot, most homes don't have a sprinkler system. So you're, you're risking the whole home burning down to the ground, which can happen, yeah. So. Yep. Okay, let's see. Um, someone asks, is the battery lithium? What type of battery? I've, I've not heard of they're, a tender battery. They're non, been... non rechargeable. Yeah, they, they are lithium batteries. They're, uh, uh, we, we do a neat thing with it. We have two, two of the uh, C123s uh, powering the circuit board, and that gives it a 10 year life. But we also reserve the other batteries solely to act to power the pump, because when that pump activates, we want full voltage to go to that pump because we need to generate 100 percent pressure that that pump can do to get your full full cone spray coming out of those nozzles. And That's then um, replacing that battery, obviously, I mean, if everything works OK, you're only replacing it every, you know, eight to ten years. years. Yeah. But yeah. Is that a pretty easy process? Yeah, I mean, here's a battery. Like I say, you can just see the unclip it from the circuit board, clip a new one on. You're ready to go with the new battery. So yeah, they are serviceable, uh, but you should only have to do it upon activation. We recommend it, and then of course every ten years, you, you just replace the suppressant bag. It's really easy. Push the connect uh, connector, and and you should and the battery. Okay, great. And then um, Francis says, I have a um, island stove, not close to a wall with yep. overhanging light. Am I correct in concluding that your system would not be installed in such a kitchen configuration? We are going with the volume right now where most ranges, you know, have a back wall to them. So we put one where we'll fasten the back wall. Are we working on one for island ranges? Yes, it would just be a nice housing attached to the ceiling. You wouldn't have the not. You would not need the actual Y bar that you see here. You'll just have the just picture a nicer, rounder housing here with the nozzles coming out each end here over your island cooktop. But we're not there yet. But our scientists are busy working on it. <laughs> the uh yeah so francis I, I mean and everybody this is a really you know th this product you know as mark said worked on it for five years got the approval now he's out there and you've been installing these in apartment buildings and they've been francis, working out great see the little white dot in the far background yeah that's a prototype of what we're working on for the island stove so okay so just definitely uh, no check worries. back, uh, Francis. And, and, uh, and again, we're working on recessed ones where you could actually put it into the uh, drywall. So all you'd see is the two nozzles. We're working with uh, range hood manufacturers so they can build it into the range hood. So it just come ready to go on a new new home. So. And um, yeah, no, the, and and actually, I mean, what a if this could be something that new home builders just automatically install, that would be a, another wonderful way to save lives and save property. It'll come about from the push we're, we're getting a reception from the firefighting community, just as if, uh, as they build in smoke detectors in the building code, fire code, mm. I think our device will be built into fire safety code eventually. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, okay. We talked about electric stoves. There's no difference in terms of what it's doing and how yeah, it's Yeah, the, the only difference would be if you do have a flame, not for cooking, but if you had a pizza box on the, it's on the on, you left one on the uh, burners, you'd get a faster ignition of a paper product, but that would be the, probably the only difference you'd see, yeah. Okay. And then somebody asked, is the suppressant okay for glass cooktops? Now, when I yeah. saw that, um, when we saw that demo there, out of curiosity, can that cooktop now be cleaned up and continue to be used? Just, yeah, it's only a liter and you can use, you know, paper towels or, or a dishcloth and, you know, mop it up, you know, 
you know, put it in the sink. It's it's, bi it's non-toxic, you know, biodegradable. And then just clean it up with Windex or some other cleaner and it's good, good as new. Yeah. Desiree asks, okay, so let's say that you have a fire and the, the fire uh, occurs. What is the cost to replace the liquid bag? Like oh. to get it back, but, it but out of curiosity, if there was a huge, let's say there's this huge flame and it's going up and it's it's hitting the device and everything like that, the device can continue to be used and, and not damaged. Yeah, I mean, part of part of the UL testing was you had to have uh, let a burn occur for a minute and then manually activate. So you wow. talk about a huge fire and you're going, oh God, what are you doing? <laughs> So, but it worked every time. So we not only could, you know, we love it when it, of course, it's a trip temperature because you're, 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 it's probably is, well, you saw in the video, it's no, not even 10 seconds, but to let that fire go a minute and then activate, but it worked. So yes, the, and what we make our housing out of and the nozzle bar, the nozzle bar is all metal and the plastic we use is heat resistant. So you got to figure it'll never get above 250 degrees. So remember, paper burns at 451 degrees. Uh, so we're pretty well protected on our apparatus. You know. Wow. And then, um, oh, to answer her question, so how much to? So you have a fire. How much for the uh, the liquid oh, bag? The bag and the battery combination, the refurbished kit, is like twenty dollars, ten dollars each. Wow. Okay. This is, uh, that's, that's pretty affordable. Um, so, uh, okay. Let's see. Francis is back here. Francis, you get a gold star for all your questions today, but I'll be looking forward to you developing the ceiling unit since I, for the very first time ever, walked away from my stove after cooking and left the flame on for quite some time before noticing. Uh, do not ask for whom the bell tolls. Uh, well, Francis, number one, I'm really glad that we had this discussion. When I hear something like that, uh, somebody, thank you for sharing that. Um, it really makes me, number one, validate that this is a topic we should all be thinking about for ourselves and our loved ones. But but Mark, I mean, I'm blown away at your invention. And uh, it really, I know you put a lot of well, the, time and energy and probably investment into getting it to this point, but I, I really see how this is is saving lives and property. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been five years since the original concept does the work and developing all. We've we've gone through twenty different nozzle designs or testing, and which is the best one. And even to the nozzle, to, I have a patent in. A, actually, we have a patent in on on the nozzles. The firebot itself is patented, so it's that unique of an idea. But the nozzles have to spray out. It can't be too hard or too fast because you get what's called splatter. You'd splatter the cooking oil and spread the fire. It can't be too light or you'd get what's called drift, where the flame would push the water or the, the spray away from the fire. So it's kind of like the Goldilocks call, cause. It just has to be just right. Mm -hmm. And then it has to be an even pattern. And that was a trick to try to get in too, because you don't know where the fire is. So the spray has to be a solid cone evenly dispersed. Evenly, if you take one inch here or one inch here, it needs to have the same amount of uh, suppressant there. So we okay. were able to do it. 20, now, 20 generations. Yeah. Now, uh, Steve has a great question here. It, is there an optional Wi-Fi device that could be added yes. to Wi-Fi 911 when your device is activated? I'm glad you asked. Yes, we we are, we are fully functional with a wireless mesh network for an apartment complex. So everybody could have a wire, wireless transmitter on their unit. And if it were activated, you would know in your apartment or the management company would know there was an activation in apartment you know, 223. Uh, we are, we have one for residential. It's a little bit different, but it, it sends out a signal, goes to a gateway, and then it hooks into your Wi-Fi in your home. 
So then you could get an app notification or a email, uh, so like that. So and, yes, and then it sounds like when you described how you've set it up is is that that this could also be compatible with other smart home app platforms. Yes, yes, of course. And what we're working on is this device right here. This is a water leak sensor. Wow. So, and the neat thing about it is it has no battery. So okay. you don't have to worry about a battery, replacing the batteries every year or two years. And what it is, if you can see the little X pattern on the bottom. Yep. So water, will, water will leak in. Of course, there's water on the ground where you place this behind a you know, wash machine or underneath a sink or ice maker or hot water heater. And the water itself interacts with a chemical in these units, which generates enough of an electrical charge to send out a wireless signal. So with the same gateway we use for Firebot, you can now get, you know, six water sensors that could check in and let you know what sensor it is and where the water leak is. Man, and, you are hitting all the uh, yeah. th these these huge problems. If anybody in the audience, I mean, the, your safety is not as compromised with the water leak, but if there's anybody in the audience, myself included, that had to deal with a water leak that you just discovered by accident. It's like, I could have not gone, my wife could have not gone downstairs for three days and yeah. our basement would have been underwater. Man, you're you're really hitting some really great uh, points for innovation. Thank you, Steve, thank you, yeah. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's, uh, um, okay, and we talked about the suppress how the suppress is refilled you just get another bag and you get another battery and it's about you know 20 30 bucks and that fixes that uh, rosalind says are is there a product for other air i mean other areas besides the kitchen like the bedroom um well we we worked on another model which is uh i have it behind me but anyway it's it's about this big it's it's not big but it's a single use say you could put it over a candle so you have a candle lit in your bedroom or a space heater we we come up with a grill model for if you're outdoor on your grill grilling and you have out of control fire so it's a portable one and we're battery operated and you just set it down on your desk and put it over top the flame so if you do get more than a candle heat it'll trip the same way on our stovetop put out the fire wow you guys are thinking of everything here um, oh, we okay. had we had one request request which really surprises and i see one from insurance companies of course the insurance companies give you a premium discount uh, but one said well do you do warehouses and we go warehouses yeah, and of course we said yeah, but we didn't, <laughs> we didn't know what they were talking about. But in a warehouse, you know, say like Amazon's warehouse, they have uh, you know the sprinkler systems, but mm -hmm. but the sprinklers can't reach the second and ground floor shelving units because they're blocked by the top racks. Hmm. So we can put a fire body into every four by eight rack to prevent a fire starting in every you know, every little bay. And the, the reason she said, yeah, we, we had insurance for a fabric warehouse, caught fire, burned to the ground, $200 million. Oh, wow. Because the sprinklers couldn't reach the lower levels where they stored the fabric. Man. Um, let's see. Yeah. All right. Uh, Courtney asks, she says, what about microwave fires and oven fires? Do you uh, have a product? You know, because usually if the fire breaks out inside the microwave oven, it's going to be contained. Mm -hmm. so, so it shouldn't be a big threat to, to your kitchen or home. Might ruin your oven or microwave, but I don't think it would spread throughout the, the whole home. Okay. Now, Krista Kramer has a great question, and this is 
this is what I was hoping. I mean, I knew that once Mark shared his product, we'd have a bunch of product questions. But Krista says, an important question for older adults is whether they can hear a smoke detector, especially when their hearing aids are out at night. And this is, you know, one of those very important talking points for us with older adults. And um, I I know, uh, and and I wish I had thought about this before our discussion because I know there are some fire detectors that have a visual signal for people that are 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 deaf or hard of hearing. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean we we do have a little LED on the unit, but yeah, of course it's it's you know if you have a fire in, in another room, you wouldn't see it nor hear it. Uh it's a good idea, good, good thought. Uh, what we need to do is if it goes into a gateway to be monitored or you get a phone text alert on your phone or email, we could have it go into another smart home device that would flash your lights in your rooms or your, your apartment so you'd know something was up. I think that would be the best we could do on that. Or you could wear a pager that would you could feel a vibration, but... Um, you're, you know, you got to have it on your, on your hip or in your pocket, or you've got to just have your lights flash in your unit. But that's, yeah. And here's, um, I'll share this, um, I'll share this web page with everybody. But let me hear, let me share my screen. That was really a great question, Krista, on, on this topic. And I found these five safety devices for people with hearing loss, and they've got you know, vibration lights or strobe lights, vibration appliances, sprinklers, fire extinguisher, fire blanket. Um, but um, I tell you, this could be a uh, a good follow up discussion um, for us. Is on, you know, a fire breaks out in your bedroom, the hearing aids are out. I'm, I'm actually writing that down. I mean, I think we could do a plug in red strobe. So that if we did activate through the Wi-Fi, we can initiate a red strobe in every room. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And, and you know, one of the things, uh, again, it's a auditory device, but things like Amazon Alexa and, and other smart devices uh, can't, it could be one of these things where a smart light next to your bedside table starts flashing, you, you know, when the fire alarm goes off, um, you, you know, again, uh, some food for thought, but thanks, Christopher. What a uh, great question. Um, Eileen says, uh, can you show us what it looks like when the unit is installed after the apparatus goes off? Can I remove the pan? How will I turn off the product once the fire is out? Let okay. me go back to your website here so she can see a uh, picture of it installed. Yeah, but I mean, it, what, what happens is that the pump activates, uh, you know, we have about two minutes worth of suppressant and then it's exhausted, but then it's got an automatic turn off. Well, in about five minutes, it'll shut down. So it just sits there and then, then you have to, uh, you know, replace the suppressant bag. You should replace the batteries, but that is that answer your question I, I i think you did a good job of answering the question here and i'm trying to um use this image to uh zoom in a little bit so hopefully folks can see how it's installed here this is in the back this is that's that unit that has the uh extinguisher and the battery and all that and then it has this little T bar, and that's uh, what puts out the flame. Uh, right. Correct. Those are the nozzles and the uh, temperature sensors, the thermistors. So uh, we have one for each side of the stove. So uh, you know we're able to measure the temperature, and then of course if they activate, we'll cover the entire all four burners at once. So it doesn't matter where the fire is, we'll put it out. Um. And and Steve is uh, one of our uh, attendees is joking around. I know he says get a Dalmatian, uh, but uh, 
but having a, a pet, I, I, I will tell you, having a dog in the house that would uh, would come and alert you if there was a fire somewhere else in the house is uh, not a bad um, thing to have. Uh, but but I wouldn't make it part of your. We've had if you can go to YouTube and you can find dogs that hop up on your stove and turn the gas on and start a fire. <laughs> so they create yeah, fires. That. Okay. They create fires. Yes. Um. Let's see. Um. Uh, okay. Let. We've got a bunch more questions in here. Let me get back to where I was. Um. Uh. Okay. So we we talked about what it looks like. Um. Marie says sounds like a fantastic product product that should be in every home. Does the chemical released have any potential damage? To any appliance or countertops? No. Um, the, the worst we've seen is, I mean, just like anything, I mean, it, it, you know, if you leave it there for days or weeks, you know, it could corrode brass a little bit. But if you clean it right up, it's just, it's just like anything. If you leave water on any kind of steel, you're going to get rust. So you do have to clean it up. You can't leave it there for a week, but it cleans up easily and leaves no residue and you're, you're good to go. Yeah. And um, Maria says, thank you for the pricing info. It seems so affordable. It seems like you could be asking a lot more. I, Maria, I, I tend to agree with you. When, I, when I was first introduced to Mark, I was, I was like, oh boy, here's going to be another one of these $2,000 products that's, that's out there and it serves a function, but it's just one of those risk reward. But you really have priced this extremely reasonably. We, we want it to be adopted. It does no good for anybody. Oh, it's a great device, but we want people to put it in their homes and use it. I mean, that's kind of a mission. And, you know, I tell every, my staff and everybody here goes, well, why did you do it? Well, for $1,095. And I, if they look at me, yeah, that's what an Epic Ski Pass costs. So. <laughs> I make that amount of money. I'm happy. I'm skiing five months out of the year. So, yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, now you're reminding me uh, some of you in the audience who know me probably don't realize I, uh, Mark and I share a love of snow sports. I'm a uh, adaptive snowboard instructor in the winter. So I remember us talking about that. And if you think about, yeah, what an epic pass costs these days and what that gives you and the fact that that could all be eliminated if there was a, a fire in your home. Uh, that's a great pricing model. Um, oh, this is a good question. What if you're boiling water and it's steaming? Could that potentially set it off? No, that's another that's another good question. But you, you have no idea of all the hours we spent. You know, let's turn on all the gas burners, which you get a little bit more heat from electric on full and let it just bake for 15 minutes, okay? We cannot get that temperature to go above 200 degrees anywhere above. And I think what it does is, is we, we need to do a study of thermodynamics above a cook, cooktop, but it sucks in cooler air. The cooler air around there is 70 degrees, so it cools down the air temperature. The only, what we find if you do get a stovetop fire, if you watch those flames, a flame is about 1600 degrees, very hot. And even with a flame, you don't get that trip of our sensor. Uh, and, uh, you know, so we, we, don't, we, we don't, didn't want it to be too high. You know, we don't make it 600 degrees, but we don't want it to trip accidentally and get a false alarm. We also build a false alarm where it has to read a temperature for three seconds before it activates. Because if you're flambeing or something and you get a poof of flame because you put, you know, a wine on your on your meal or something like that, it's not going to false. But yeah, it's a good question. And, and we even put rigged a above the stovetop with the misters like every inch. So we can measure the exact temperature every place on that stovetop, right? And Still, even right above the flame, you could, couldn't get it above, you know, 250 unless it got higher and was actually lapping up against the semester. Right. So, uh, yeah, we've 
almost couldn't test it anymore anymore yeah and and i'm sure like with every product as you sell more units and as they're out there you'll that is the ultimate focus group and some things will pop up that you didn't think about but it's but it's you've done a lot take a candle take a candle if you hold your hand above a candle you can keep it a foot above that candle all day you bring it down within an inch ouch you know so it's a different thermodynamics are pretty funny but we we think we've guarded against a, a false alarm yeah i love it um uh, sally's got a great question here it's uh do you think insurance companies will ever consider lowering premiums for homes that have these installed i asked yeah. mine about the possibility if i installed an automatic stove shutoff device and i was told that they were research that i was told researching and they said no yeah, the the deal is with insurance companies, they want to see results, and I'll do a parallel with safety belts in your car. Okay, of course, Volvo was the first manufacturer to install safety belts in their cars, and uh, uh, the insurance companies well thought that was great. Volvo knew it was good, and what happened is the insurance companies have to see results before they'll give any kind of premium discount, even though it makes sense, even though it's logical, right? So they went and looked and go, oh, everybody who drives a Volvo and it was in an accident, they saved half on deaths and injury. What a great safety device. So then they said, well, you know, if we get every car manufacturer to install safety belts, which they did through the National Transportation Administration and lobbying and this and that, and yeah, they give it, you lowered your premium rates for car insurance, but of course they make the gap. They may give you a 10% discount or 20%, which of course is great, but you got to figure they're saving 40% on claims, just the way it works. Um, you know, the other thing is the advent of seatbelts. Look what you have in cars now. You have shoulder harnesses, airbags, anti-lock brakes, side impact panels, you know, safety glass. So it caught on big with the auto manufacturers and the insurance companies. And I think our device will catch on big with- uh, Well, it, yeah. here's another um, thing to just commend you on your pricing because I didn't even think about the automatic cooktop. So I just typed into Google, automatic stove shut off. Look at how expensive these products are, uh, folks. Um, I mean, you can't see find anything under $400. And I can only imagine how difficult it is to install one of those. And at the end of the day, that would only work for an electric stove. And you still got the fire. Like nothing, nobody's putting out that fire. Um, so... Uh, I, I imagine your pricing. You you looked at you looked at those products, and it's sort of like, hey, I can put this together and beat that and the installation. I love it. Um, uh, okay. Oh, Anne wanted me to. Uh, do you mind repeating the cost, please? I can't. Okay. Wait. I googled the company, but the prices are pretty high. Yeah, Anne, we're looking at a, you're looking at a different product because. What what is the price? So the residential price single unit is two ninety nine ninety five, okay. And and like I say, if if you live in an apartment complex and they decide to go ahead and buy it, and they're buying five or more units, we can we can give you a wholesale price on it where where it's two hundred dollars. So it's, no one has an excuse not to have one of these in their kitchen is what we like to say. Okay, yeah. so. so um, yeah, so and you know, compare the in and, and the product. If you came in late, for anybody that came in late, I'll have this whole recording on our um uh on our website this afternoon, and I'll have the two videos, the commercial and the um uh the demo installed there. So you can go back and see how the product works and see what what it's all all about. Um uh let's see. Uh okay. Mary says, I'll be, um, I'm, I want to be on the wait list for the freestanding one. Um, 
Uh, Marie says, I recommend anyone needing to get a new appliance has this option for electric to go go for the in, to go for the induction cooktop in addition to having the firebot. We've had the induction cooktop for 10 years. It's the safest option over gas or electric burner. I, my parents got the induction cooktop. And the other nice thing about that is minimizing the chances of just getting burned. Um, you know, it reduces that. Um, it is pretty cool and it works very quickly too. Um, let's see, uh, Ray says there are dozens and dozens of older adults in my apartment building. We really need your product here. So Ray, I'm going to, um, I'll make sure, well, Mark, actually, if you can drop in your contact info into chat, um, yeah. and, uh, Ray, what I would recommend is reach out to Mark directly and have him speak to your apartment manager and, um, uh, that's the way that we can get some of this stuff uh, put together. Um, and let's see. Um, uh, my smoke, uh, Rosalind says, my smoke, let me look that up, is a fire alarm that um, uh, is very loud. Uh, fire alarm. And then let's see here. Um, okay, and no, no problems with breathing. Those no, no, it's it, it, the spreads is non toxic. Like I say, eat, eat to the touch. Uh, you know, breathing. I don't. You wonder. I, I wouldn't drink it. It probably <laughs> it certainly doesn't taste good. But uh, you know, I've <laughs> just so anyway. So I've gotten some in my mouth, uh, hasn't killed me or no ill effects. So, yeah. Okay. And then um, the My Smoke fire alarm that was recommended uh, by somebody, I am dropping that link into chat for everybody. It looks looks pretty interesting. Um, and uh, uh, the uh, that's good. Okay. Um, lots of comments about how good a session this was. I agree. Holy cow, Mark! I, it's That's one o'clock. We we burn we burn through an hour. Uh, but um, I tell you, oh, should I say let's extinguish it with a firebot? Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> well, so um, the, the, uh, this is amazing. Hats off to you for just you know doing the right thing. And I think every I saw somebody in here. We all hope that you're going to be. Uh, you're going to be able to buy all your family epic passes because this is going to be a uh, successful venture right. for you. Um, I will make sure to put all the contact, all the chat transcript into the recording, and uh, we'll we'll load it up as a podcast so you can walk your Dalmatian and listen to it as well. Um, but uh, but Mark, uh, hats off. Stay in touch and. Um, uh, and 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 let us know as yeah, you keep I'll, on developing it. We will. We, we we we're coming out with a fire extinguisher based on the same principle. And I saw the one where it says my alarm speaks. Well, if you take the fire extinguisher off the wall, of course it'll instruct you how to use it. It'll be more more effective than your traditional uh, uh, pressurized ones. And then it'll also, since it's electronic, will let you know it's there working every half hour and the batteries are good. And, you know, like, you know, save everybody on commercial, especially $1,800 to $100 because they won't need to get it inspected every year. The signal just goes in through the Wi-Fi. Man, you, you're just like, you're going crazy on this. I, I tell you what, uh, this is, I, it's I love it. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. And and folks, remember, uh, you can also call Baldino Locks and Key if you're in the D.C. area. Uh, and that's another way to support uh, what Mark is is all about, too. Well, thank you, Steve, and everybody for listening, too. So uh, anyway, we'll. OK, thank you again. We'll see you all at the next one. OK.